Hi, and welcome to my culminating episode on the topic of lipogenesis. In this episode, I'll be attempting to give an overview of the key points involved in the creation and storage of fat and cholesterol within the body. I'll be focusing on 1. The specific foods that trigger lipogenesis. 2. How the end products of digestion are treated by the liver. 3. What happens when the liver is continually bombarded with such products. 4. The consequences of such events. And finally 5. How a basic understanding of the interaction between specific foods and specific hormones may be useful in reducing the likelihood of such negative events from occurring. Okay, let's begin. Lipogenesis, also known as de novo lipogenesis, abbreviated to DNL, is defined as the synthesis of fatty acids from non-lipid sources, and more specifically, carbohydrate-rich foods. Lipogenesis occurs when someone consumes an excessive amount of such foods within their diet. These foods are subsequently broken down by the process of digestion, a majority of which occurs within the small intestine, to release glucose, which is subsequently absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the liver. Now, the liver removes around two-thirds of this glucose, while the remainder is left in the bloodstream for use by other tissues. The absorbed glucose is first converted into a branch-chain polymer of glucose called glycogen. This occurs under the influence of the anabolic hormone known as insulin, which is secreted by the beta cells located within the pancreas. Once liver glycogen stores are full, which equates to around 100 grams, any excess glucose is converted into acetyl-CoA, which acts as the input for lipogenesis and the formation of fatty acids. Once again, this occurs under the influence of the hormone insulin. Once formed, these fatty acids are combined with glycerol to form triacylglycerols, commonly abbreviated to TAGs. Under normal circumstances, the liver stores only a small amount of fatty acids as TAGs, with the rest being transported to adipose tissue by special carrier proteins termed very low density lipoproteins, abbreviated to VLDL. Now, adipose tissue is predominantly located beneath the skin, classified as subcutaneous fat, and within the abdominal cavity, beneath the abdominal muscles, as visceral fat. Visceral fat surrounds a number of organs, including the intestines. In addition, there also exists another form of stored fat, termed ectopic fat. This involves the storage of tags in tissues other than adipose tissue and more specifically organs that are supposed to only contain small amounts of stored lipids, such as the liver. Now, while adipose tissue is designed to store tags, it can also manufacture tags from circulating glucose during the fed state. Based on this, it's not surprising to know that these cells become the major storage hub for tags within the body. These adipocytes often swell up to three times their normal size, leading to weight gain as more and more tags in the form of fat droplets occupy the cytosol. While this is occurring, stem cells known as adipocyte stem cells undergo differentiation to create more and more mature adipocytes, further increasing storage fat capacity. In short, both the liver and adipose tissue are engineered to deal with excess dietary glucose by converting glucose into DAGs through the process of lipogenesis. Serious metabolic issues, however, can arise during the chronic overconsumption of carbohydrate-rich foods, altering hepatic fatty acid metabolism, commonly leading to the accumulation of DAGs within the liver and to a clinical condition known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Individuals suffering from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease commonly exhibit elevated levels of cholesterol. This is because the liver can use the acetyl-CoA produced from the metabolism of glucose to synthesize more cholesterol. Once again, this occurs under the action of the hormone insulin. In both cases, insulin activates the commitment step in each of these metabolic pathways, 
For lipogenesis, it achieves this through the activation of acetyl-CoA carboxylase, while for cholesterol synthesis, insulin activates HMG-CoA reductase. In short, by reducing your intake of highly refined foods which are high in carbohydrates, this will help reduce unhealthy levels of lipogenesis and cholesterol synthesis. While this is not a total solution, it does help pave the way towards a healthier future for those of us who might be predisposed to a number of diseases associated with unhealthy levels of fat storage. Thank you for listening.